So you guys want to be superheroes, huh? No? Sounds like lots of fun, saving the world and helping people and all those kinds of things. Well, this morning we're going to talk about being superheroes. This morning, I first want to introduce you to the greatest superhero who ever lived. And probably not in a comic strip. No, this superhero is in the Bible, and this superhero is Jesus. Jesus. Now, I don't think he looked like that. That was someone's idea on what he might have looked like as a superhero. And he probably didn't come to earth on some comet or something like that. In fact, the Bible tells us that he was born as a baby in a manger. That, it was pretty simple, not very spectacular, except that the angels came and announced his birth and sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Well, as Jesus grew up, he did some very amazing things. His first miracle was turning water into wine, and it was the best wine they had ever tasted. Later on, he had all kinds of people listening to his teaching, and they were really hungry. There's like more than 5,000 people there, and he wanted to feed them. And the disciples are going like, where are we going to get enough food for all of these people? And he says, well, what do you have? They said like, five loaves and two fish. He says, great, that ought to be enough. And he blessed it and he turned it into enough food that everybody ate their fill and there were still leftovers. That was amazing. Jesus did all kinds of awesome things. He walked on water in the middle of a storm and then he calmed the storm. He healed people, people who were blind, people who couldn't walk people who couldn't see or hear, people who had had skin problems. He healed all of their diseases. Jesus was an amazing superhero. But his greatest superpower is this, the power of love. Love is the greatest superpower that there is because love is what is so needed in this world. All of those superheroes that you guys know about, they've got some great things that they can do, right? But if they don't have love, the Bible says nothing that we have, if there isn't love, it amounts to nothing. And Jesus had the best love that there ever was. I want to tell you this morning about one way his love that he demonstrated, that power. It's the power to forgive. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. (sighs) Have you ever felt guilty? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, you know, maybe you told a lie. Maybe you stole something. Maybe you cheated on a test. Maybe you said some mean things about somebody or put it on Facebook or some other social media. Maybe you picked on somebody at school or you wouldn't let somebody eat with you at lunch or play football out on the playground. There's lots of ways that we can be kind of mean, isn't there? Yeah, I know I've done some things too and feel guilty about that. You see, when we do things like that, that's what the Bible calls sin. And what sin really means is is that you've missed the mark. It's like you're, you know, maybe have a gun and you're doing target practice and the target is there and you're like way off the mark. You can't even hit the paper. It's you're such a bad shot, right? Well, God says to us, this is my target that I want you to hit. I want you to love me and I want you to love other people. And when we do bad things, we like miss the mark. We just like can't even hit the target at all. And that's what we call sin. And God says, this is what I want for you. But when we say, no, I want to do things my way, we sin. We miss the mark. We get off the path. We go astray. We do what is wrong. And the Bible tells us that when we do that, we become separated from God. I mean, God loves us. He made us. He made us good. He made us to love him and love others. But when we do what's wrong, it separates us from him. But God wants us back. 
God loves us that much that even we, when we do wrong, he wants to bring us back. And that's where forgiveness comes in. Forgiveness is the ability to let go of the wrong, let go of the hurt, and even pay the penalty for it, for somebody. And that's what Jesus did when he died on the cross. He took everybody's sin, all of my sin, all of your sin, all of these folks' sin. He took it all and he paid the whole price for every bit of it. And the good news is, is that when we believe in Jesus, when we trust that he can forgive us and that he does love us and that he does want us back and we ask for forgiveness for our sins, he says, you are forgiven. I've paid it all. It is complete. It is finished. It is done. You don't have to worry about your sin anymore. I've brought you back to God. It no longer separates you from God. You see, that's what makes Jesus the greatest superhero in the world. And he's not a cartoon. He's not imaginary. He's real. He's true. He lives in heaven today, and he still loves us. He still forgives us, and he still helps us. But that doesn't answer our question yet about how we become superheroes. We found out about the greatest superhero, but how do we become superheroes? Well, that's where our Bible verse comes in. And our Bible verse for today is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, and it says, I can do everything all things through him who gives me strength. Put your arms up like super strong. There we go. Huh? I can do all things through him who gives me strength. So if I pray to Jesus, I should be able to go outside and lift up a car, right? If I pray to Jesus, I should be able to fly like Superman, right? If I pray to... Eh, I'm not sure if that's what Paul meant when he wrote that. You see, the kind of super powers that Jesus wants to give us are different. Like I said, Jesus probably didn't look like this, right? He probably looked a lot something different. And the guy who wrote those words, I can do all things through him who gives me strength, was the Apostle Paul. And when he wrote those words, he was in jail. Now, that doesn't sound very strong, does it? Now, what's he doing in jail? If he can do all things, can he just bust out of there? You see, the reason why he was in jail was not because he did wrong, but because he did right. But people didn't like the right that he was doing. He show was showing Jesus love. And he was telling people about how to have their sins forgiven. And those in power didn't like that. And so they put him in jail. And so we, when he's in jail, he didn't complain. He didn't say, this is so stupid, I'm going to give this up so I can get out of jail. He knew he was there for, what's doing, for doing what was right. And he said, I'm going to make the best of my circumstances even when I'm in jail, because I love Jesus so much, and what he did for me, I'm not going to turn my back on him. So that's when he said, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. It's not like he could lift up horses or fly from building to building or things like that, but he could do the things that Jesus wanted him to do. He had the superpower of love. Okay. So, remember, superpower of love. What does that look like for us? Well, it's being honest. You know, there's a lot of powerful people in our world who don't tell the truth. But when you tell the truth, you have that superpower to do what's right. When you show kindness to somebody, not that many people are kind. But when you show kindness, that's really a superpower to be able to help somebody out, to be able to do some good for them, to maybe share things with them. 
to be there for others. And maybe sometimes it even means taking a stand. Standing up to a bully. Standing up to somebody who thinks that this is funny, but it's really not. It's really hurtful. And say, that's not right. I don't want you to do that anymore. I'm going to have the courage to stand with my friend here who's getting picked on, and I'm going to be their friend, even if you don't like them. You know, those are hard, hard things to do, aren't they? But Jesus gives us the strength to be able to do them. He's with us. And that's what kind of superpowers I'm talking about this morning. The superpowers that Jesus has and the superpowers that he wants to give to you to live a life for him. You see, you can be a superhero. Maybe not because you got a fancy ring or a fancy hammer or live in a bat cave if it's not too dark in there. But every day you guys can do what's right and tell the truth and be kind to others and be helpful and take a stand when you see things that are, are wrong. You can do all of these things through Christ who strengthens you. Now, I've got a little video to show you of some middle school guys who display exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Let's watch it together. Don't you love that video? <laughs> That's awesome. We end tonight with the football play of the month. It was executed with amazing precision by the Eagles, the Olivet Eagles. Steve Hartman has the play and the post-game analysis on the road. Between classes, they schemed and conspired. For weeks, the football players here at Olivet Middle School in Olivet, Michigan, secretly planned their remarkable play. Did anybody go, this is a crazy idea? No, everyone was in on it. But like the coaches didn't know anything about it. So you're like going behind their back. I've just never heard of a team coming up with a plan to not score. It's just like to make someone's day, make someone's week, just make them happy. The play, which was two plays actually, happened at a home game earlier this month. The first part of their plan was to try to get as close to the goal line as possible without scoring, even if it meant taking a dive on the one yard line, which it did. The crowd was not happy. Quarterback Parker Smith. But us kids knew, hey, we got this. This is our time. This is Keith's time. Keith Orr is the little kid in the brown jacket. He's learning disabled, struggles with boundaries, but in the sweetest possible way. Because of his special nature, it's no surprise that Keith embraces his fellow football players. Hug, Gabe. What is surprising is how they have embraced him. Hello. We thought it'd be cool to do something for him. Because we really wanted to prove that he was part of our team and he meant a lot to us. Nothing can really explain getting a touchdown when you've never had one before. Which brings us to part two of their play. If you didn't see Keith, it's because they were so protective of him. But he was in the middle of that rush. And when you crossed the goal line, what was that like? Awesome. <laughs> it was like, did he just score a touchdown? Get your what? camera out. I'm like, oh, I can't. Keith's parents, Carrie and Jim, almost missed the moment, but they got the significance. Somebody's always going to have his back from now until the day he graduates. She's right. When the football team decides you're cool, pretty much everyone follows suit. Today, Keith is a new kid, although by no means was he the only one who was profoundly changed. What was it like for you? It was like, like once I saw him going, I was smiling like about like here. <laughs> Wide receiver Justice Miller. Like nothing could wipe that smile off my face. Why did it affect you so much? Because like, he's never been like cool or popular, and he went from 
being like pretty much a nobody to making everyone's day. Justice admits the play wasn't his idea. I would have not really thought about that. He says it never crossed his mind to give Keith any glory. Well, I, I kind of went from being somebody like mostly cared about myself and my friends to caring about everyone and trying to make everyone's day and everyone's life. Which may just make that touchdown the most successful football play of all time. Steve Hartman, On the Road, in Olivet, Michigan. We you see, the power of love, the power of kindness, the power that you have to make a difference in somebody's life. It takes great strength to do that. But remember, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. So I want to encourage each of you guys to do that. All right, let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Superheroes are fun cartoons, but it was great to learn about Jesus this morning, that he's the greatest superhero that ever lived and continues to live in us. Thank you for the superpower of love that he had and demonstrated to us when he died on the cross for us. And thank you that he gives us the strength to show that kind of love wherever we go, whatever we do, we can always be honest, we can always be kind, we can always care, we can always share, we can stand up for others and have courage to do that. And I pray, Lord, for the cadets and for all of us here that more and more we would look to you and find your strength to do these kinds of things. Thank you so much for being our Heavenly Father and Jesus for loving us and for helping us to be true superheroes. In your name we pray, amen.